What I'm about to show you is something many people would find offensive. And what's perhaps more shocking, at least for some of you guys, is that I actually wore t-shirts with these images on them. All right, certified muff diver. I picked up this shirt as a souvenir from my trip to New Orleans, Louisiana. Next up, we've got join the Marines, travel the world. Yeah, and uh, you can read the rest. Next up, we've got men make the strangest requests. I do remember I wore it during a presentation in college for one of my classes. Now that beaver shirt, the reason I know the time and place is because I had somebody bring it up to me years later. So I'm in the wedding party of a buddy of mine talking to his soon to be wife and she brings up the incident. In fact, she mentioned that night and sort of apologized for years thinking of me as an offensive loser. She went on to say that having talked to me multiple times over this last weekend, she can see she was wrong that I actually was a really nice guy and even maybe a gentleman. I didn't mean to come off as an offensive loser. I just thought this shirt was funny. But here's the deal. The clothing you wear sends a signal. And in some cases, like mine, people can form a negative impression of you that can last for years. The next style mistake you want to avoid? Revealing too much skin. Yeah, the deep V-neck t-shirt, avoid like the play. But seriously, gents, there's a whole study that talks about how people are taken less seriously, are seen as less competent, the more skin they reveal. And before some of you guys say, oh, that just applies to the ladies, I was at a conference with a good friend of mine who, let's just say, has an amazing build. He's a bodybuilder, and he was walking around in a very close-fitted t-shirt. And he brought a sports jacket and said, you know what, let's do an experiment. I want you to wear your sports jacket and basically cover up those guns, those arms, and let's see how people react differently with you today. And sure enough, he noticed a huge difference. People the day before, they were paying attention to his build, to his muscles. It was right in their face. And they made an assumption that somebody this fit probably didn't have a whole lot up here. Now, anyone that knows Ryan knows he's one of the smartest information marketers on the planet. That being said, when he wore clothing that focused people in on his body, they had a different expectation versus one that actually put him in a more professional type of look and therefore setting. Next up, let's talk about flip-flops. Let's talk about sandals. Let's talk about slides. Guys, this is not formal footwear. I know you think this is obvious, but there's always that guy trying to wear flip-flops with a suit. Now, that being said, I've got nothing against open-toed footwear. In fact, I own quite a bit because these are functional pieces of footwear that have been around and used by men for over 6,000 years. In fact, I wear slides here in the office and around the house because when I come in from outside, I take my shoes off and I want to be able to walk around the house, not just in socks, but also in something that's incredibly comfortable. And gents, if you're in the market for a pair of comfortable slides, you need to check out Nordif 8. Gents, their tagline is slide into relaxation. I have to say, having used these for the last month, pretty much every day, I 100% agree. What I really love about Nordif 8 is they've got this contoured footbed that offers great arch support and it relieves foot fatigue. Because I don't know about you guys, but when I come back from a five mile run, the last thing I want to do are put on some heavy boots. I just simply want my feet to relax. I want to be able to walk around the house and feel like I'm walking on clouds. That's exactly what it's like with Nordiv 8. I also find they're incredibly functional when you're going to the pool or going to the beach. If you get sand in them, they're easily, it's going to wash all out. What I love is you can actually remove the insert right in there to get any sand or any water if you want to dry this. Another thing I love is the traction. Yes, occasionally I've worn these outside the house on ice and hey, I was able to get a good grip, but more importantly, walking around the house up and down the stairs, we've got these wooden stairs. I do not want to slip, which I have done on socks. What I love is I've got a good firm grip with the ground. If you spend a lot of time exercising, you're out walking, you spend a lot of time on your feet, that arch support is friggin' amazing. So gents, if you want to treat your feet to comfort around the house, around the office, check out Nordiv 8. These are amazing slides. I'm linking to them down in the description and that deal, it's not going to be around forever. Again, gents, use that link, get the best deal on the web. Now, having just talked about slides, you may be wondering why, Antonio, what is your thoughts on socks and sandals? Some guys like this. Me, I do not like it at all, but I get it. I actually wear my slides around the office with socks. But again, this is in the confines of my own home. It's not something I'm wearing out in public. So there's my answer. All that being said, a style mistake that's even more offensive, in my opinion, is the trouser tail. What am I talking about? It's when you wear jeans, you wear trousers that are too long, haven't been hemmed, haven't been adjusted to your height, and the back of them starts to fray. Then it starts to tear. And all of a sudden, when you're out there walking, you are dragging two to four inches of fabric on the back of your trousers, and it looks 
like a tail. Seriously, gents, when you buy trousers, when you buy jeans, get them hemmed to fit you. Some jean companies actually, if you talk with them, they will actually do it for you for free. Other ones, just simply take it to your tailor, take it to a seamstress, get it adjusted. It's going to be a few bucks. All of a sudden, they're going to look better and you're not going to have that dreaded trouser tail. And as it, we're talking about adjustments, guys, know the name of your tailor. I say this because you need to be taking clothing that doesn't fit you to get adjusted. You know, a suit that costs you just a couple hundred bucks, it'll make it look like a thousand dollar suit. It'll take jeans that you got on sale for 20, 25 bucks. It'll make them look so much better. And this is really important on not just dress clothing, but simply a pair of chinos. Yeah, you've got that whole diaper khaki butt thing going on in the back. I mean, seriously, guys, you spend all that time in the gym. Why not be able to show it off by wearing clothing that looks good on you? And I'm not saying it's fitting skin tight, but I am saying it's tapered and brought in in certain areas. The next mistake is trying to wear black trousers with a blue jacket or blue trousers with a black jacket and passing that off as a suit. Guys, a suit by definition are trousers and a jacket made of the same material. And most people, when they're talking about a suit, they're talking about something made from worsted wool that has a classic silhouette and fit. Guys, if you're going to own one suit, then don't break it up. Don't wear the trousers and jacket separate. If you do, I do have a video on how to do this, but I think for the majority of men, you need to have that one suit that you can grab for that special interview. Whenever yeah, you're changing industries, you're going from, you know, blue collar to white collar. Maybe you just, you're in college and you are going into that interview with that consulting company based out of New York or Chicago, or you've got a funeral and you want to look good. You want to pay your respects, or maybe you've got a wedding, a dark colored suit, in charcoal gray, navy blue, but making sure the jacket and trousers match exactly and not messing one up or the other. Guys, that is key to always have it ready in your wardrobe. Or maybe you disagree. Guys, if you disagree with having a suit in your wardrobe, I want to hear from you down in the comments below. Now, if you're going to wear a suit, understand the buttoning rules. Whenever you're wearing a two button jacket, when you stand, you button the top button, the bottom button, you button never. And when you're seated, you can have both buttons unbuttoned. Or if it's a relatively loose one, you can leave it buttoned. But uh, yeah, no one should ever correct you. If somebody does, uh, yeah, just ignore them. Now, if you're wearing a three button suit, and those are pretty rare nowadays, you have the option of buttoning the top two buttons, but the middle one should always be buttoned if you're standing. And again, never button the bottom button on a suit. The only exception to this is a one button suit. Usually you see that in formal wear. In that case, you would button it, but uh, they're very rarely seen. Next up, let's talk about jorts. I don't know when or where these were in fashion. And I do think that a lot of guys just simply bought shorts that were too long for them. Understand if you're a little bit of a shorter guy, you got tons of options. You've got five inch inseam shorts. You've got three inch inseam shorts. The shorter that short's going to be right there in the inseam. Usually that's going to be more towards sports shorts or swimming trunks, but you're not going to want to go with a nine inch inseam if you're, you know, five foot three. Now, if you're six foot three, definitely look at nine inch inseam shorts and and probably avoid the three inch again, unless you're going to the beach, but understand that usually shorter shorts on a man are going to be more casual, longer shorts. The longest I like to go is about two to three inches above the knee. And by the way, in case you're wondering why do longer shorts not look good on a man, it's all about proportions. They throw them off. And again, you got to look at your height. That's really going to affect the length of the shorts. But um, yeah, just when they go past the knee, they just never seem to look good. And while we're talking about shorts, understand that cargo shorts or shorts that are using like a camo type of design, those are always going to be more casual versus shorts that have no pockets on the side. They're going to have a more sleek silhouette, maybe in a khaki or maybe a dark gray. Those are going to be shorts that you could wear with a polo and maybe even a pair of, you know, a uh, horse bit loafers. And that'll be a great, you know, a little bit of a preppy look, but one that I think looks good and is timeless. Next up, let's talk about logos. So wearing a huge logo, this was, I think, Ralph Lauren was pushing this. She had a few other companies that they were going with these huge logos. If the company's paying you to do that, great. But I think for the majority of us, we don't have sponsorships and it just looks, uh, I get white people from certain countries. My wife's Ukrainian. It seems like a lot of Russians, Ukrainians, Belarusians, they love wearing the logo. You see this all the time. And what's funny is it's oftentimes on counterfeit clothing. They're trying to send this message that it's a status thing. Um, don't, it really is not a timeless style look. And I think in most countries, you don't need to do this. And yeah, it's just, 
I, I've never liked look. I don't know. Agree, disagree? You guys know where to... Let me hear it down below in the comments. Now, what about contrasting socks? So, there was a big thing started about a decade ago in which we saw all types of colors on socks. I think that can be fun if you're wanting to add a pop, you know, of color and you understand it's going to bring down the level of the outfit, the formality. But in general, you want your socks to match your trousers, especially if you are in a dress situation when you're going to be, you know, business or type of a look like that. Um, now, what about the socks matching the shoes? You can also do that, but I think it does kind of break up the look and it doesn't make the leg line look as long. So, usually, again, you know, keep them simple, keep them conservative, unless you are going for a pop of color, then have fun. But avoid, you know, wearing sports or athletic socks. Even if they are dark in color, we can tell by the weave and the overall look. They're just too thick a lot of times and they actually don't work great with dress shoes. Um, and avoid avoid white socks with dark colored trousers or, you know, I, I can't believe I even have to say this, but I do see it on occasion. Yeah, it's never a good look. Next up, the half tuck. Guys, if you're going to wear a dress shirt, tuck it in. If you're going to wear another type of shirt, let's say a polo that doesn't need to be tucked in, then don't go the whole half tuck thing. I don't know who started this and why some people think that this looks good, but I would avoid it. Now, how do you wear a dress shirt with maybe something a bit more casual like jeans? Well, guys, I've got you covered in this video right here where I break out exactly how to wear a dress shirt with jeans and not look yeah, like, like an idiot. How to do it right. So, if you want to learn how, boom, guys, I got you covered in this video right here.